Everybody have a man, I'm an addict. Hey, Amanda. And I'm just going to be honest with y'all and tell you I'm still really, really ADD with a few years clean, so forgive me if I get distracted by that back door. Speaking. Um, when I was asked to do this workshop, I honestly had no idea exactly where I was going to go with this. And so I started um, thinking about our literature and the places in our literature that really talks about these kind of moments, and so I, I ended up going to the Living Clean book. And if you're new in this room, I love this book, but if you don't know steps one, two, or three, this book doesn't apply to you yet. So to take the time to go to the basic text and work some steps first. But with that, I'm gonna go to what's really on page eight. So it's not very far in the book and it talks about growing pains. And there's a paragraph in here that reads, eventually all of us come to an emotional crisis in recovery. We start wondering if recovery will last or if we've just gotten a brief reprieve and are about to go crazy again. A member shared, my life seemed stable by outward appearances, but inside I was a mess. I was clean but miserable, reactive and fearful. We find ourselves in these dark places, sometimes with many, many years clean. We deal with our addiction, but some of our underlying issues remain untouched. Long buried emotions come pouring to the surface, and we may or may not have the tools to deal with them. As I discovered things about myself, a member shared, my emotions started to run amok. There are no bitter ends in recovery, but sometimes it feels like that's where we are. Recovery gives us a new chance at life. Sometimes we have to accept that invitation more than once. The bottoms we hit in recovery can be frightening. We can go through some dark times. When we are in pain, it can be hard to reach out and easier to see differences. But even in the darkness, the process is still going on. When, when NA members say, don't give up five minutes before the miracle, we're not just talking about the first one. And so I read that and um, started thinking about the times in my life where I think really were influential on me when life showed up. And some of those are bad bottoms. Um, some of those are grandparents dying. And some of those are losing jobs. And some of those are realizing that I have no clue how I'm gonna pay my car payment this month. Um, but a lot of those are, I just got a promotion. And a lot of those are, we just bought our first house, or I'm getting married, or things that probably aren't the first things you think about immediately when you talk about when life shows up, because for me as an addict, the good and the bad probably go hand in hand. I am just as susceptible to not applying my recovery in the good times <coughs> as I am to not applying my recovery in the bad times. And those moments when life shows up, honestly, are the ones that are a whole lot quicker for me to stop and go, hmm, I can't do everything on my own. There are certain things I can't change, and I really need to trust my higher power to take me from where I'm at right now to where I need to go. It's when life doesn't show up that I tend to struggle with those things a little bit more. It's when the complacency hits and uh, everything's kind of going the way. It's kind of normal day to day. I get up, brush my teeth, fix my hair, go to work. Those are probably the ones where as I get more days in this program, I have a tendency not to remember that I need to put my recovery first in those moments. And so when I think about the times when life does show up, um, I'll go back to when I very first was introduced to NA. And I've been thinking about the exact way to phrase this, but I had some time in these rooms and I had a sponsor and I'd worked some steps and I'd sat in some meetings and I'd heard what was shared and I was in this beautiful recovery bubble at that point in time in my life, and I got to a point where I didn't have to be there anymore. And it wasn't very long after that, it was a very quick wake-up call to me that though I knew about recovery, I had not actually applied recovery. And when real life <coughs> came back around, when I was on my own, when I wasn't forced to sign in, when I wasn't living with three other girls who were in the same situation as me, when I wasn't um, when I had access to my car again, when I had access to old people, places, and things, I didn't have recovery to apply. And although I had heard the message of NA and I knew there was hope and I knew there was a promise of freedom, when life showed up for me at that point in time, my clean time went up. <coughs> and it was 
by the grace of God and a court system and a judge and some people that, that took a chance on me that I had a second chance to go back and do some things differently and take what I had been hearing for about two years and start to actually apply it. And so I learned very, very early on when the pain got great enough that when life shows up, there's a reason for this program. And it has stuck with me and applied ever since that point in time. And so when my grandmother died, I talked about it. And I went to meetings and I shared, and I went to meetings I didn't normally go to and I shared about where I was at. When I was getting married, I knew that I was marrying another addict. And so I went and found addicts in these rooms who were married to other addicts and talked to them about it. And I applied those messages like, you know, don't work your husband's program for him. He's got a sponsor for that. And so I've, I've learned very, very quickly that when life shows up is when I need to start working on me. And when I start working on me, it's when I need to start doing some steps and journaling and looking at those feelings. And as I got more time in this program, I started to reali realize some about those underlying things, those things that this text talks about, about the fact that I spent the first couple of years working on drugs were a symptom of the problem in me. And then I got around and I started getting promotions and pay raises and larger paychecks. And I started realizing that some of the symptoms of the problem of me were spending habits and bank account issues and credit issues that I needed to talk about. And if I wanted to buy a house, I might want to look at the fact that I stored the ambulance I called when I was high that one time to just pick me up because I didn't have a ride. And so there are things in my life that, that were continued to be those underlying issues that I had to deal with that had nothing to do with not putting dope in it had to do with my behavior. And so how I react to those situations and what defects I choose to pull out of my back pocket and which tools I choose to pull out of the toolbox directly affect how I come through to the other side. Um, I am grateful today that I have a career that at one point in time sitting in a jail cell I didn't think I would ever have. And I have a family and I have the respect of a lot of people in the community who have no clue <laughs> that I'm a recovering addict mm -hmm. and that um, my higher power has let me, has opened some doors for me that I thought for a long time that this disease had ruined. And through that, I've had plenty of opportunities to put myself in situations where it would have been really easy for me to relapse or hide bad behavior or do things. And I learned through being around substances that I don't need to touch, even though I need to be there for a professional environment, I learned through talking to other addicts that there's a way to do that because when people are putting you on a pedestal and they're not in one of these meetings, they don't realize that as an addict, my ego needs a reality check pretty quickly. And so I get put in a lot of these situations where they put me in the limelight or put me in the center or put me on the stage where my disease will run rampant. And there was a time in my recovery where I needed some strong women in my life to put some humility back into where I was going and remind me of what happens when you don't look at the good stuff just the same way that you look at the bad stuff. And so today, when I'm in those environments, I'm fortunate enough to know that there's a lot of us that have been put in those positions. There's a lot of us that get to go to events where things are served that we don't need to be around. There's a lot of us that have recovery buddies that go to those meetings. And so when life shows up, it's all about finding the right tool to have in your toolbox to go with you. And it may not, there's not a list in any of this literature that says, when you go to X event, take this person. <laughs> but there is a principle in the fact that this is a we program. And we have done everything together. And we have experience. But I have to take the necessary steps to go find those people and seek experience and talk to my sponsor and share about it in meetings and journal, which is probably the number one thing I hate doing on anything on the planet because I hate writing stuff on a regular basis. And then look, and then after I write about it, I don't even want to look at it. So I have to be willing to look at what I've wrote down and identify some patterns. And for me today, those patterns all boil down to good or bad, no matter how life is going, it, it all comes down to, 
I can't do everything on my own. I know that there is a group of people around me who can help me, and I need to rely on my higher power to show me how to get out of my own way and go to where he's, dri he's guiding me. And it, 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 it all comes back to those first three steps. And a lot of it comes back to the serenity prayer, which is why my sponsees today, I have sponsees at different points in time in their recovery that are recovering at their different rates. And I always share with both of them with what's going on in their life right now that that serenity prayer is the key to getting through all of it. Because with, <coughs> with one of them, when life's going really bad and she feels like everything's going completely out of control, I remind her just to control the things she can. And then with the other one, when life's going really, really good for her right now, and she's sitting on top of the world, I remind her that uh, she doesn't have power over other people, places, and things, and, and she needs to probably breathe and make moments. And so the best thing that I can share about what to do when life shows up is just to keep it simple and remember the basics. Call your sponsor. Remember you have a sponsor when things get good. And uh, work some steps. Thanks for letting me share. Thanks, Thanks Amanda. Amanda. <laughs> I'm going to stand up. Okay. I'm Troy C. and I'm an addict. Hey, Troy. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Gretna38 for asking me to come and share my experience, strength, and hope because I have a disease that tells me that I don't have any experience, strength, and hope. Um, when life shows up, right? And, and let me say this, right, because I'm very proud of it. Today I have 12 years and 12 days clean. This is my, this is my month here, y'all. I love this month right here, right? Uh, but when life shows up, right, and, and, and I was trying to think of some things myself. I had this mental note of all this stuff I was going to talk about. I can't remember any of it. <laughs> so um, I prayed about it, and I think I'm going to let God take over and let him do what he do, right? Because this ain't Troy's show anyway. Uh, but when life shows up, first thing about when life shows up that I can think about is when I got clean, right? I came into this fellowship. I'm, I'm actually from Atlanta, but I moved here to Macon, Georgia over, a little bit over 12 years ago. And, um, and I came into this fellowship, man, and I came in and I said, look, God, whatever you want me to do, if you just don't let me go back to them streets of Atlanta, downtown Atlanta, I'll do it, right? So I got here, man, and I came to Macon. I came here with a long record following me. I had been in a lot of trouble throughout the years of music. I used for 23 years, and I went to multiple jails, multiple county jails, multiple state facilities in the state of Georgia, in the state of Florida, in the state of Tennessee, and in the state of Alabama. <coughs> so I had a pretty, pretty long record, right? And I, and, and I came here and I got clean, and, and the people who were around me who got clean, a lot of them started getting jobs, and they started getting cars, and they started getting their own apartments, and I'm steadily filling out all these applications, man. But life showed up for me, right? Because everybody looked at my background, and they were like, mm-mm, you ain't coming up in here. <laughs> You know, and I was going to, I went everywhere. I went to McDonald's, the Church's Chicken, Kentucky Fried Chicken, the local gas station, the mom and pop store. Nobody would hire me. And, and that's all I could think about as a newcomer. All these people are doing so good. But here I am, right? My background is holding me from getting a job. Eventually, after a lot of prayer and a lot of talking to people, I said to myself, you know what, God, it's yours. I'm throwing myself in Narcotics Anonymous and I'm gonna do what I gotta do. Because all that time, right, he was taking care of me anyway. Because there were some guys in the fellowship who had their own businesses and I was working with these guys. So everything I needed was taken care of. But I was stressing about I need that paycheck, right? Everybody was paying me cash money and I was, you know, I was learning then how to hold on to cash money, save money. <coughs> and I'll never forget, right? And this, this is one of those first times, right? And, and the guy who uh, I went through treatment here in, 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 in Macon, Georgia, he's sitting in the room right now. And um, he told me, he said, uh, do you have a copy of your background? And I was like, yeah, he worked for a state-run facility, state of Georgia. I said, yeah, but they ain't gonna hire me, man. My background too bad. And I already knew the state of Georgia don't hire convicted felons, right? He was like, just, I got you, come on. And, and i never forget, I handed him that, and I was sitting in front of him, and he was looking at me then, and he's looking at me now over the top of them glasses. <laughs> and he flipped the page, and he looked at me, 
And he flipped another page and he looked at me. I said, yeah, I know that ain't gonna happen, right? He said, just calm down. He flipped another page, he said, don't worry about it, we got you. And I actually ended up working, at the time, still on felony probation, I ended up working for a facility that was run by the state of Georgia. That was my first initial understanding of when life shows up, if I get out the way, God got me. That was the first initial one because it continues, right? The thing about it is a lot of times when I was out there using, life was showing up, I just wasn't participating. See, life is going to show up whether I participate or not. Today, in recovery, I understand that I need to participate or I would drag myself a lot of pain. Pain has always been a motivator for me, even clean. And I hate saying it, but I, in the basic text, it talks about some of us have a higher threshold for pain than others. I'm one of those some of us. I've tested this clean. So life has continuously showed up from that point on. And, and, and for me, I don't know who in the audience can, can identify with this, right? But for me, if I really want to see life show up, all I got to do is get in a relationship. <laughs> it shows up well, right? Because I've been in a few relationships clean. <laughs> what really shows up about that, though, is me. It's me. Right, because I, I remember my first girlfriend when I got clean, right? I had 20 some days and she had 30 some days. <laughs> <laughs> they told me laughter is identification. Y'all understand, right? So we got together, man, but check this, right? They had already told me get a sponsor, get a network, get your literature, get a home group, get involved in this program. So with 20 some days in this program, I was involved. I was involved. I was involved with my home group right here in Macon, Georgia, the New Life Group. I was involved in this area, the Piedmont area. I was doing service work with my home group, the area, and anything else I can get involved in. I had a sponsor and I had a network. I was calling people on a daily basis. So was she. Believe it or not, that relationship lasted two and a half years. Both of us clean. When it split, it split bad. <laughs> Neither one of us used. Neither one of us used. Both of us, because when life showed up, <laughs> right, I immediately went right into my network and my sponsor. Look, I don't know what to do. Right about now, I don't want to go to work. <laughs> I don't want to eat, I don't want to sleep. <laughs> All I want to do is cry and ball up in a fetal position, <laughs> right? Y'all showed me how to make it through that clean, man. Y'all showed me how to make it through that clean. Once again, that was two and a half years into being clean, and right after that is when I actually got that job I was talk talking about, right? It was maybe two months after that. November that year, yeah, I got that job. And that kind of helped me out because then I had something to do to keep my mind off the relationship and I was working, da da da. Well, four months into the job, I'm riding down Mercer University. Anybody who's here from Mason or Mercer is one of the uh, major streets here. Uh, I'm riding down Mercer University. I went, me and a co worker left work at lunchtime to go get us something to eat and come back. And an 18 wheeler runs over my car. And when I say runs over my car, I was stuck up under the 18 wheeler for 45 minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, they had to get me out from under there. Um, I think that's, when, when everything first happened, I can recall I couldn't find my phone and I asked my coworker, you got your phone? And he said, yeah. I said, call the job. Tell Sam, we just been in an accident. So he called at that time, somebody was on his side of the car. I hadn't even looked to my side of the car, right? This is the part that was all up under the truck. And um, somebody was at the window, I said, yeah, call, da 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 my sponsor, I gave my sponsor number. Somebody else was out there. I, I was yelling out numbers and this, I was being real calm, right? And then after I got all these numbers out my mouth, I looked around, there was blood everywhere. 
My voice went about 20 octaves high. I said, please don't let me die. <laughs> but my point on when life showing up there is, because of that accident, I had to have three hand surgeries and a back surgery, right? So here we go, life showing up about this program is, we have a chapter, uh, more will be revealed about when being in extensive pain. Right, so during that time, I was in extensive pain. I had to have that operation and all, right? And he talks about the medication part. So when life <laughs> showed up on that end, right, I had addicts surround me and make sure. Now, I'm, I already know, my mind does not operate like quote unquote normal people. I read a bottle, the bottle says, take one for pain every four to six hours. By the time that hits my mind, it says take four to six every hour for pain. <laughs> but when life showed up on this occasion, you guys were there with me. So I had people who were there to help me. Now what made it even better is I was so afraid of using at this time, right, that I did not even take one for pain every four to six hours. I took one every 12 hours just to keep it in my system and endured the rest of the pain. That's how afraid of getting hooked on drugs I was. And still am. I, I ain't confused about that today, right? Because I understood that if I, if I start liking it, guess what? But three days before I got three years, my father died. And, um, <coughs> That's still a soft spot in my heart. I had just, like I said, I had just started the job, so I just really started getting money right. And, that, and, and my family, my, my father lived in Michigan, Flint, Michigan. And my family was like, um, man, we flying people in from everywhere. We're not going to have much to help you get here. And I was like, OK. This fellowship showed up and showed out. And when I say showed up and showed out, I had, and I'm not going, I'm not going to break into that anonymity. There was, there was one of our fellowship members who rented a car for me for two weeks, and I said, when I get the money, I'll pay you back. He said, no. <coughs> when you get the money, you help somebody else with it. Now after that, I, I went to about like. Three meetings before I had to take off. And every meeting I went to, man, people were handing me envelopes and cards. I didn't even have a suit to wear. But with you guys' help, not only did I have the transportation, the suit, the gas money, and a hotel fare. And I was like, these people right here, they're they going to want something from me. <laughs> they're going to want something, and y'all do. Y'all do want something from me. Y'all want me to give the same thing that you've given to me to someone else. Yeah. Believe it or not, with all my heart, I have been working to do that, and I still don't think I can ever pay it back. I still don't think I can ever pay it back. Life continues to show up, right? Check this, and she mentions it. Life not only shows up in bad areas, it shows up in good areas. Because that guy who has this long, extensive record, and I haven't had anything expunged, I haven't had anything that's been pardoned off my record to this day. But I went to school. But when I went to the school, I went to go get into the medical field. They looked at my background and said, you ain't gonna be able to come in here now. I said, I said no. I said, but I work for the state of Georgia. They say, what? I said, yeah, I work for the state of Georgia. So the professor said, okay, let me take this to the board and we'll see what they say. He came back two weeks later and said, the board said you can come on in because if the state of Georgia give you a chance, we'll give you one too. <laughs> Not the end of it though. Not the end of it. Because in that field, in this field that I'm in now, we had to do clinical, which means I have to go out to hospitals, right? So every hospital that they were sending me to was saying, no, you ain't gonna be able to come in here. The school say, well, he still works for the state of Georgia, and we let him into the school. So the hospital said, okay, well, if both of y'all give him a chance, 
I'll give him a chance too. Now today I have no issue getting in any hospital in the state of Georgia, Alabama, or over in North Carolina, because I work in all, all three states. I travel to different hospitals and I work. The part about when life shows up on that one is, right, things going good, making good little money, da 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 da. I have to be very careful. My ego and my pride will jump in the way and make me say, look what I've done. So life shows up on good terms too. I have to be very careful. What I'm grateful for is that you guys told me, right, once you get this little tool, once you get this sponsor, once you get involved in this program, once you start working these steps, you better practice some spiritual principles. <laughs> in our basic text, I'm not, well, yeah, I am a book thumper, but I can't tell you what page and what paragraph. I'll tell you what chapter, though. More will be revealed. More will be, more will be revealed, there's a place in there where it says, Recovery affords us the opportunity to ease the pain of living through practicing spiritual principles. So when life shows up, I need to practice the spiritual principles. All this shit sounds good, don't it? <laughs> Newcomer, it ain't as easy as it is me talking. Because I don't always practice spiritual principles when life shows up, whether good or bad. My ego and my pride will jump. It jumped and made me buy that damn car that's sitting out in the parking lot. <laughs> Stop laughing, Gary. <laughs> Cause y'all, when I got here, right, y'all didn't promise me that I was gonna have a lot of money, that I was gonna have a nice car, that I was gonna have a, 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 a house, that I was gonna have a woman, or none of that, right? What y'all promised me is that I can have freedom from active addiction. That's the part of life that I wanted. I figured that once I stop using, everything else is just gonna go smooth. <laughs> yeah, I was sadly mistaken about that. Because life does show up, right? Check this, I was just, and, and I'm proud about those 12 years and 12 days, right? But I'm gonna let y'all know this, right? For me, and this is strictly for me, the longer I stay here, the crazier I realize I am. <laughs> I mean, I start to recognize that some of this shit I've been doing for years, right? And I thought it was all right. It ain't all right. That's life showing up on me on a daily basis. I do something, I'm like, why did you do that? I talk to myself. They say it's all right if you talk to yourself if you don't answer yourself, right? But I answer myself too. I have conversations. I be riding down the street having conversations with myself and having to look over and somebody be looking at me like, because they know they don't see no earpiece. Right? Because I do that. Because there are times when things are happening that I have to do that, right? I have to talk to me to get an understanding that I'm doing something crazy so I can come to y'all and get some help. I have a God in my understanding that I believe in wholeheartedly. I trust him. I pray to this God continuously. And every time I say a prayer, one of y'all show up. <laughs> in one way or another, either my phone ringing, I see you at the meeting, you walk up and say, how you doing? I'm like, I'm good. You're like, no, that ain't the look I know that's good. But that's what it is, right? When life shows up because I'm working to work this program, you guys are here for me, man. Y'all are here for me. And I think that is the biggest blessing I could ever have in my life, man, is you guys. You guys, man, because life shows up on a daily basis, whether it's good or bad. Whether it's good or bad. And I'm not the best at howling. You know, I, I know a few gurus right here in Macon who know how to solve everybody's problems. <laughs> and, and, and I've been watching them, right? I think when I get 20 years, I'm gonna be just like them. <laughs> no, I'm not. No, I'm not. But for me, it is a learning process on a daily basis, man. Because life is gonna show up. The minute I think I got, like relationships, for instance, right? I'm, I gotta dive on in there. 
I am. I'm going to do it, Felicia. I ain't going to tell it all, though. <laughs> but in the relationship area, I'm learning because in go, in do, throughout doing step work, I started noticing some patterns that I had, right? And my patterns showed me that every relationship that I was in, the face was different, but the female was the same. <laughs> now, from that first one, I never forget going to my sponsor and telling him, man, this girl's crazy. <laughs> he said, are you going to leave her? I said, no. He walked away from me, right? <laughs> I may have went back to him two months later and said, man, this girl is crazy. He said, are you going to leave her? I said, no. He walked away again. The next time I went to him and said, man, this girl crazy. He said, Troy, let me tell you something. I said, what's that? He said, you chose her. A lot of times, we, a lot of times, right, I like to say, okay, I participated in it. <laughs> Let me hit y'all with one bigger than that. I initiated. Yeah. So the biggest part about that is, in learning these patterns in these relationships, I'm starting to learn that, okay, stop choosing what you've been choosing because that just ain't working. It ain't working. Y'all keep telling me doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results is what? Insanity. Well, how about doing the same thing over and over again, knowing the results? <laughs> this is the process I'm in, though. This is the process that I'm in. Because I've done that for so many years, it's not just that easy. I got 12 years clean. I used for 23 years. I started using at 15. I didn't stop till I was 38. I'm 26 now. <laughs> I don't know what y'all are asking me, right? <laughs> but the whole, whole point about that is, right? The whole point about that is when life shows up, I'm not an expert at it. I have to learn. I learn from you guys. I learn from actually going through it. Because I can listen to I can listen to somebody tell me, okay, I did this, I did that, and that's how I got through that, right? It's really okay, let me let me let me put it like this here. This is this is about when life shows up. I pick up a book about putting an engine in a car. I read this book through and through. I go out and I put an engine in the car, I put the key in and turn the ignition and it don't crank. Now there's this mechanic who's never read a book, can't read, but he's been putting engines in cars for 40 years. He goes out, put that same engine in that same car, turn the key and it cranks. So how do I come in this program Get 30 days clean, and all of a sudden, I know how to live when life shows up. Oh, I read the basic text. I read, I read it from front to back. I read the stories in the back, and, and, and now I, I can save the world. When life shows up, it's about living through the experience. I got a process that I have to go through. I understand that today. That has also helped me in not being judgmental or self-righteous when I see others going through their experiences. Because guess what? If I need y'all, somebody going to need me. If I'm being self-righteous and judgmental, how the hell can I help you? Or how can I allow you to help me? Yeah. When life shows up, I done cut off every avenue I need. Because he doing this and she doing that and he doing this and now I don't need them. And that's the very person I need when life shows up. One thing I know about this program, right? It gives us that promise of freedom from active addiction. Everything else is a gift. If you've been in this program and you are clean and I need you, I don't care what you're doing outside this room. Can you help me today inside this room? 
That's what I'm learning, man. When life shows up, I got to stop cutting off my help. I got to stop cutting off my help. My sponsor tells me I have to learn to accept everyone in here for exactly where they are. Can I accept me for where I am at? Because if I can do that, then I can start to grow. Because life shows up, man. It shows up. It showed up when they picked up that phone and called me and told me to come up here. <laughs> 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 because once again, in between my ears, right? This thing in between my ears will trick me every time, man. It'll trick me. It does the tricking. It does the tricking. It'll trick me right out of my recovery. Life can show up. I ain't got to do now. Piece of dope and end up in jail, institution. Yeah. Yeah. My sponsor told me, Troy, you can go through these 12 steps, 12 traditions, and 12 concepts. All the while you here, but if you don't practice some spiritual principles, you're going to have some trouble going on, son. And that's the main thing he got me into doing after each step, tradition, and concept is start practicing these spiritual principles I'm learning. So that when life does show up, I got those tools in there, right? I got those tools in there. And, and that's just, once again, new government, this sounds real good. <laughs> it's not always that easy. It's simple, but not always that easy. But we have, what is it, um, in uh, the tradition, they said we have to do it, just, we, we still got to do it. Let's, we got to do it. That's the whole thing about it. Get involved in doing it. Like she was saying, you got to get started. This is the Journey Continues book she got right there, right? How is the journey going to continue if you ain't got to start? So when life shows up, if I want to have some tools, that means I got to get started with the small things, medium things, and the big things, practicing some spiritual principles. And it's not always going to turn out right. I'm not always going to practice spiritual principles. But then I get up, dust myself off, and keep going. Don't use no matter what. Don't use no matter what. I've, I've lost the love of my life. Now we don't even speak. <gasps> my father died. I had the real bad accident. Lost a couple more loves in my life. <laughs> Y'all stop laughing at me, right? But I haven't had to use because of it. Life has shown up good and bad. And I haven't had to use because of it. I ain't been to jail since I've been clean. Ooh. For me, that's a big deal. I got a running joke with my car partners who I play cards with just about every day. And we be sitting around the table and we talk real harsh to each other, right? And somebody will say something crazy and I'll be like, yeah, I'm going to hit 911. Y'all called them enough on me. It's time for me to call them on y'all now. I ain't been to jail since I've been clean, man. That's a big deal for me. And life has been pretty doggone good, even throughout the mistakes that I made. Now, before I sit down, I want to say one more thing, right? For the newcomers, right? I'm here in this program, and I'm working this program to the best of my willingness, and that's what it's all about. How willing am I? And I make mistakes in living, and I make mistakes in the program and recovery. I make mistakes. But I'm the first one also to raise my hand and say, guess what? Today I'm a man up and say, some stuff is not a mistake. I wanted to do it. Now when life shows up with those consequences, and now one of y'all got to face them, I do. So that's what I have to keep first and foremost on those things that I, I just want to do it. It's consequences to it. Because life does show up. Like I said, good, there are good consequences, there are bad consequences. There's no such thing as a wrong consequence. Okay? So, only thing I can say to you newcomers, keep coming back, make meetings on a regular basis, get yourself a sponsor, get a home group. If you don't have a home group, you're homeless. Get your literature, read your literature, get you a network of people, call these people, get involved in this program. Some type of service work, whether it's making coffee, area, your group, chair meetings, whatever. Because when it starts to spin, and it will spin, mm -hmm. if you are in the middle, you will not fall off. Thanks for allowing me to share. Yeah.